Welcome viewers. In today's video, I'm going to be installing a factory Ford fifth wheel gooseneck hitch prep package in a 19 F350. Now this is the sixth one I've done and I've modified my procedure to where I've got it down to about three hours. I, I do it differently than Ford's workshop manual says to do. Let me show you a couple of the special tools. Let me show you the, what comes in the kit, the stock number on it or the part number on it and then I'm going to show you the order that I do it in. So here is the part number. Here's what comes in the box. Make sure you have everything. I have done one of these. And it didn't have everything in it. It will have four brackets. You may not need all four. Some Fords come with uh, the inner frame brackets welded to the frame already. So we got one bracket, two, three, four. You also need the trim kit, little plastic trim pieces and caps that will go over the gooseneck hole and the, the fifth wheel hole. Uh, of course the bracket itself, you also need the bolt kit, just here, and then you'll need the, the wiring, trailer wiring harness, and the connector, and then the, like the bezel and the mounting hardware. So we have everything in this kit. A couple of the special tools you'll need. You'll need this bed bolt socket. It's an EP24. You can see this brand is uh, VIM, or no. V, yeah, it's VIM, VSP8 EP24. You'll need three hole saws. The hole saw, you can get that stuff at like Home Depot or whatever. You'll need a um, two and an eighth hole saw for the wiring harness. In the, in the bed, you'll need a four and a quarter and a three inch. So you've got a four and a quarter, three inch, and two and an eighth. You're gonna need some drill bits and some drills. You also need a deeper tool to, to deeper these holes you'll be, you'll be drilling. And the rest is just uh, simple hand tools. Oh yeah, you'll, you'll need a torque wrench too. So let's get started on this. Okay, the first thing you need to do is disconnect the wiring here on the passenger side of the hitch. And then we're gonna disconnect the wiring over here for the tailgate and pull this tailgate off. Next step is to remove the bolts for the fill neck. You gotta pull this plastic cover out of the way. And there's some bolts underneath there. I just take a pick and get underneath of it, pop it out. just got these plastic tabs that hold it in. Sounds awful when you pull it out, but the way it is. It's an eight millimeter there. And was it five millimeter? Five and a half millimeter on this. Takes care of that. All right, the next step is to locate the little dimples underneath this bed liner for our five holes. And this one obviously is going to be right in the center. I use a really sharp chisel. You 
gonna need some good knee protection. I use one of these knee pads. All right, there's the dimple right there. That's easy enough. And we need to do these front ones. And I think it's about right in here. I've done enough of them, I kind of know where they're at. There's a little dimple right there. So I locate these front ones, and the back ones are a little more tricky. I go 13 inches back. And it'll be right about in here. Oh, there's about 13. And there's the dimple right there. We'll do the other two and we'll start drilling. All right, the next step is to start drilling the holes. Let's start with this four and a quarter inch center one. I think, yeah, four and a quarter inch center. I'm gonna use my half inch air drill. I get a little bit more torque out of it than this half inch Milwaukee. Kind of like it better for these high torque situations. And you want to make sure you're flat all the way around or as close, close as you can. And there's the big daddy-o. We'll swap over and put our, I think it was a three inch, yeah, three inch one on. And we'll start punching some three inch holes.
All right, next step is we want to deburr these holes. I'm using a rotary file. They can make a non-ferrous that has uh, like rougher teeth in it. It'd probably work a little better, better, but that's all I have and hey, it works great. Okay, the next thing we need to do is uh, drill the holes for the wiring harness. We're gonna switch over to a 208 inch hole saw. And I saved this template. There'll, there'll be a link in the description on this. You can print this template out. It doesn't come in the, um, in the kit. So uh, I've already cut the bottom off and the side off of it and kind of knocked these holes out a little bit so I can mark them. Since I've done enough of them, I just, I just saved this one. We're gonna go ahead and mark this. It's real simple. I just use a paint pen. It goes right on the edge and goes down here on the back seam and the bottom seam. It don't have to be perfect. marker center and our four outer holes there it is I think what I'll do is I'll do some pilot holes including that center one I normally do pilot holes in the other four but we'll do the center one too There we go. And then we go up to 1132. And we'll switch back over to our rotary file. Now let's punch that center hole.
Very nice. All right, we're done punching holes. Let's finish this up with the rotary file. Okay, the next thing to do is clean this all up in here. We're done making a mess. Uh, so we've got all the holes uh, punched and deburred, including the, for the wiring harness. I'm gonna vacuum all this up, and then uh, we're gonna pull the box bolts next. So we're done in here. The reason I leave these box bolts in, when you're walking around in here, you're walking on the end, the box actually flips up. It's, it's really light. Next step, we move box bolts. The next step is to lift this box off the frame. But before we do and before I stage it, I want to show you there's an interference fit between the cab and the lip of the box right down here. I don't know how well you can see that. So what I want to do when I stage this and put the lift arms underneath of it, the front lift arm is going to go right underneath here. We're going to lift this about an inch, about as, as far as we can get it so it's not quite touching the cab and then we're just going to slide the box back as far as we can until this plastic guard or trim piece here touches the bumper and then we're just we're going to go up a little further and just keep sliding it back further slide it back I think you have to do it like three times so you can clear the cab all the way up so this lip here will clear and then you can lift it completely off the frame get it out of the way and put those brackets in.
So here it is. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a pain. You gotta kind of pull it back as you're lifting it so you don't put any creases on here. Luckily it does have little plastic guards. Or you can maybe pull it off and give yourself a little bit more clearance. So this one here has the internal, uh, the inside brackets already welded from the factory, which makes it really nice because that'll set our, our height right there since they're already welded on both sides. There's the one right there. Perfect. So we're ready to do a little vacuum in here, vacuum some of this mess up and put our bracket in, torque everything down. Okay, since this one has the inner brackets already on it, I don't have to worry about that. But I keep this little cheat sheet with uh, the numbers on it. So it's a, it's a quick reference for me. It speeds it up because the brackets look really similar. So if you want to check this out, the, the uh, driver's side inner is a 28CA. Driver's side outer is a 28AA. Passenger side inner is a 28 DB and passenger outer is a 28 28 BA So there you go So here's a 28 BA that one will go right here And then the 28 AA right there Gonna wipe the frame a little bit. Now the bolts that go through the side brackets are these large bolts with the large flag nuts. Okay, next I'm going to use a 24 millimeter end wrench so I can put on the backs of these nuts or else they just rattle violently. And I'm going to snug these up. I'm not going to tighten them. Next, we put these alignment dowels in, and then the bracket goes on. And this thing weighs a bunch. There's a, it's offset, the puck, can't see it on the sides right here. It's offset. Uh, towards this runner, towards this cross member. That's gonna go forward to the cab. And then these alignment valves go in these holes. Now we're ready to run the rest of the bolts through these smaller bolts with the uh, that 
what is it, the uh, EP24 head, they go on the inside. And the remaining four bolts go on the outside. All right, I'm gonna snug all these bolts up next. I'm gonna start with these Torx ones, kind of flatten it down to this, the, these inner uh, welded brackets. And then I'm gonna tighten these to suck this bracket up and then I'm gonna tight, uh, pinch them together and leave them all loose still, just barely. I think I got it. So it's kind of flat down, this bracket sucked up to this cross member and pinched together and just kind of working it all together so nothing's binding. You see how beefy that thing is. I've installed some BMWs. Those BMWs are really nice units, but uh, they're no comparison to these OEM Ford ones. These, these things are killer. Plus, you got kingpin and fifth wheel whatever you want to do with it. So let's torque these down. All right, you start with the side brackets, 184 foot-pounds. You can see we here why having the box off makes it so much easier. Next is the Torx bolts to 173. And these outer ones are 110 foot pounds. Looks like most of all your load and force is all through this inner one in the frame. This outside one just kind of floating out there, bracing it. So we've got the four inners torqued, four outers torqued, and then the four cross members. So we're ready to drop the box back on. Before I drop this on, I want to show you these alignment dowels that are plastic for the box and they're only on this passenger side so when you go down you hover the box right above them then you push it forward and then drop it on and then always make sure make sure these little uh, box bolt nuts don't slide out because you can see the kind of move in there Looks like they're all in there. That's in there. All right, we're ready to come back down. 
take one last look at this and see why these things are so nice. The rigidity you get on here, so I think you can haul, I don't know, 16,000 pounds, something like that. Maybe even more, I don't know what these things are rated at. And they fit in there nice, they fit, they kind of notched out for the exhaust here on both sides. And they missed the def tank and the wiring. Okay, we're ready to drop the box. I should say, lower it down on the frame, not drop it. We don't want to drop it. Okay, while it's still up here in the air, I'm going to put my wiring up. Install the wiring up in there. Taking a trip laying down on it. goes like that. Plug that in. It can just stay there for right now. bolts back in it. Looks like our cross member lined up perfectly in there.
Okay, the box bolts get tightened down to 129 foot pounds. These are hard to tighten because a socket wants to slip off. So you got to kind of hold it on here. <sighs> Man. Since I'm in here, might as well put all these little trim pieces in, and you just kind of, kind of uh, invert it a little bit, start it in the groove, and roll it in. And when you're really tired, kind of sweating like I am, these are fun to put in. So I'm kind of rolling it inside out and then popping it in like that. Now for the caps. Okay, next up. So I've already run the wiring in there and snapped it in place. Got to run these little nuts on, over the holes. That's where having everything all prepped comes in, uh, comes in really handy at the end of your job. So you're not doing this, all you got to do is just put the four screws in these little clips in. a little trickier when they got the rhino lining in here.
I go ahead and start all four screws first before you do anything. And then what you want to do is, uh, when you tighten these down, you want to crank these things down as hard as you can, usually like an impact driver, and just flat this thing out and crack all the plastic. No, just kidding, you don't want to do that. Because it ain't going nowhere. But I'm sure people have, because people like to just over torque everything and break everything. Now for the DEF filler neck and diesel fuel filler neck. Same thing goes here. You, you want to probably drop something down in there and uh, ruin your afternoon, fish it out. Oh, that's always fun. driver here with this extension it's a uh, snap-on it's got a little quick release coupler and it's four inches just they use it on so many things like air filters round the hood small stuff um, and I got it set on too that way I don't over torque stuff yeah it works really good use it uh, all the time Boom. Okay, next we're gonna run our wiring down and around. See if I can get you up here to see it. This little Christmas tree here goes in that little hole in the box. And there's another little push clip right here. Gonna go in that little hole. We're gonna snake the wiring over the top. I'm gonna have to put the camera down though. You disconnect the stock uh, trailer connector and then you connect this piggyback it in, is all you gotta do. Just a plug and play. And then we plug in this, these two harnesses over here. That pretty much completes that. And then we gotta put the tailgate in and run the wiring down for that. And this job is done. Okay, there you have it guys. Um, I just checked my time on this. It says I have 3.3 hours into it and that's filming it. So that's really good. 
Uh, looks like I can actually get under three hours without filming. So let's take a peek at it. When you're all done, just make sure all your lights work and all the lights work here. That's pretty much it. It's got the plugs in it. This guy's, this guy's ready to go. Put a hitch in it or a kingpin and go connect up and do what he needs to do. So I hope that helps any of you if you want to do this yourself. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.